Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Say. Mr. Speaker, say, the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, and Honorable Members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, say, I'm privileged to deliver my opening speech in this August Parliament to begin this 2020 2021 session of Parliament. I stand in support of the Honourable Prime Minister and my colleagues in extending my appreciation to His Excellency for his timely and thought-provoking address. Mr. Speaker said, His Excellency the President in his closing address rightfully said, and I quote, the work for the next 50 years begins with this session. Mr. Speaker said, the Fiji First Government proudly begins our first session with our Honorable Prime Minister as our leader into the next 50 years of our independence. Our Honorable Prime Minister is a leader and a statesman of global repute, whose leadership reached new heights in 2020 as we mark this historical occasion. His leadership showed courage and foresight as he led Fiji through COVID-19 and its impact. Mr. Speaker said, His Excellency's speech at the opening of the 2020-2021 session of the Parliament, as has been the case with his previous opening addresses, was full of wisdom, practical, and pathways for this House and for all Fijians. I would like to affirm that my role and that of my ministries, namely employment, productivity, industrial relation, youth and sports, is in the service of all Fijians like other government ministries. This aligns the Fiji First government's principle of all Fijians first when it comes to service and its delivery. That is our mandate, Mr. Speaker, say, and that is our mantra, our continuous commitment to the betterment of all Fijians. The Fiji First Government is built on this platform as it has been from day one in the government. It is a platform that His Excellency the President reminded us that is enshrined in the Bill of Rights embedded in our Constitution. Mr. Speaker said, His Excellency added, that these rights to protect every Fijian and the government was demonstrated in the well thought out course of action by the Fiji First government when it took bold steps in closing our borders to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. I express again our gratitude to our frontline personnel at our borders, in the hospitals, and wherever deployed in conducting their roles with commitment and at the times risking their lives and that of their loved ones. As we look forward to medical development, Mr. Speaker said, to control COVID-19, we must abide by the words of His Excellency, the President, that we must maintain our discipline and leadership to safeguard the health and well-being of all Fijians. Mr. Speaker said, it is on this note of not letting our guards down, I would like to move on to reiterate what I said in the last parliament sitting, that a healthy and a safe workplace is more productive workplace. My ministry, Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relation, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, will continue our workplace OHS awareness, inspection and audits to ensure the health and safety of our Fijian workers. Mr. Speaker said, the nationwide workplace survey that we undertook between May to June 2020 was to determine the impact of COVID-19 at the workplace. I have in the past gone through these figures and in summary, it showed that 43% of the total workers surveyed were affected out of the workplace sample size. 
Mr. Speaker said 53% of the affected workers are from the Western Division, 39% are from the Central, and 8% from the Northern Division. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker said the top five most affected industries were wholesale and retail, accommodation, food and tourism, manufacturing, construction, transport, and storage industry. Mr. Speaker said, we were in our concern with those many workers and their families that were affected directly in terms of job losses. At the same time, Mr. Speaker said, I acknowledge the resilience and character displayed by many of these affected workers and employers in finding alternative livelihoods. Mr. Speaker said, given that COVID-19 and its impact, even post vaccine is projected to last for some time, we will conduct another workplace survey in the new year on the continuing impact of COVID-19 in workplaces. This is to enable, Mr. Speaker said, for us to monitor and ensure that we have relevant interventions to contain the impact of COVID-19 on employment. Mr. Speaker said, at our workplaces, I wish to commend the understanding and good faith relationship by the employers and workers in resorting to practical means to minimize the negative impact of COVID-19 and their support and understanding during the initial nationwide survey. Mr. Speaker says, as we continue to be on guard against the impact of COVID-19 and at the same time rebuilding our economy, it is very challenging balancing act indeed, as alluded by His Excellency the President. Mr. Speaker said, the Fiji First Government did not step back from taking responsibility. We have put in place physical measures to assist in our economic recovery. The Government has moved quickly and in relevant ways to move quickly with various legislative reforms to facilitate our resilience and quick recovery. His Excellency, the President, has indicated in his speech, this specific legislation that we'll debate on a later in this session as a means of moving Fiji towards recovery and beyond. Mr. Speaker said, in an uncertain and complex environment, the Fiji First Government has shown its ability to provide decisive leadership in responding to changes in the internal and external environment. Mr. Speaker said, the world will be a different place post-COVID and we will have to rethink crucial areas in employment, productivity and industrial relations. Mr. Speaker said, the key to economic recovery that is sustainable and moves beyond the impact of COVID must be increased productivity across the board. There are no shortcuts or easy road to recovery. Many times, Mr. Speaker said, we hear of Singapore being the gold standard as an example of productivity and economic activity. What we don't often hear about is the road to achieving this gold standard. Singapore quickly realized imitating quality cycles or productivity manuals was not enough. It required a culture change, a change of mindset, a change of attitude, a change towards rising our level of national productivity. This must be done across the board, Mr. Speaker said, and in every sector of the economy. Mr. Speaker said, with technical assistance from the Asian Productivity Organization, we now have in place a 15-year Fiji National Productivity Master Plan that is aligned to our 20-year development plan as well as with global capstones on development. Mr. Speaker said the master plan may have the keys and methods, but to determine the factor in productivity must be both our employers and employees. Mr. Speaker said, productivity will need this injection of innovation and commitment 
to ra rising standards at the workplace so that we can do more with less. We need Fijian businesses to raise the bar when it comes in providing a workplace so that productivity can increase. We need to provide the right tools to increase productivity. We cannot build multi-story buildings with wheelbarrows and subals alone, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Technology tools and equipment are needed along with local innovations on productivity. These are the areas, Mr. Speaker, sir, that my ministry will work with both employer and employees as we map towards realizing the key goals of increased productivity as the foundation for a better future. Mr. Speaker said, we continue to make good progress together to achieve better employment relationships through advocating good faith approach embedded within the Employment Relations Act 2007. Mr. Speaker said, the Labor Mobility Program established under the National Employment Center Act 2009 is an avenue that is contributing towards fulfilling the Fijian government's COVID safe economic recovery framework. Mr. Speaker said on 25th of November, we have witnessed the first lot of 172 Fijian workers departing to work in Australia on a three-year work visa in the meat industry. Under the Pacific Labour Scheme, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is encouraging to see the smiles and excitement by these workers on their way to three years of sustained work and skills development. Mr. Speaker said, we will send an additional 186 workers in January 2021, followed by a similar number in either March or April 2021. In total, we anticipate to send around 500 workers to Australia under the Pacific Labour Scheme in the next four months. Mr. Speaker said the positive multiplier effect of Fijians under the Pacific Labour Scheme is going on a three-year work visa is very significant towards our economic recovery. The spin-offs include, among others, are remittance inflow, family income, growth of new small and micro enterprises, new skills and experience. Mr. Speaker said the other mobility programs are already in the pipeline, notably between the Fijian government and the New Zealand government. And that is in regards to the seasonal workers, Mr. Speaker said. On the local front, Mr. Speaker said, my ministry is assisting our local employers in providing activities and volunteers at as part of the next services. In addition, my ministry introduced an open market day in Suva where the unemployed and workers affected by the COVID-19 sold their products. These initiatives, including the Cash for Work program, will be replicated in other parts of Fiji, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, in the current COVID-19 pandemic, it is important that our Fijians understand their skills and how important their employment experience equips them to work in new jobs. Mr. Speaker said, my ministry had advertised an expression of interest for a number of short courses a few weeks back. The response was very positive, Mr. Speaker said, with over 400 unemployed Fijians registered to attend this short training such as baking, beauty therapy, green plumbing, tiling and basic meat works. These short courses, Mr. Speaker said, will be delivered through the National Training and Productivity Center through our current collaboration with FNU. A total of 179 unemployed Fijians are expected to attend, Mr. Speaker said, the first phase of the training this month with majority of participants based in the West Division. The second phase of the training will be undertaken early next year to ensure that all those express their interest to be reskilled or upskilled are provided the opportunity to ensure that they are able to start their own small businesses or find meaningful employment to support their families, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Mr. Speaker said the mediation service of my ministry in its 10 years has never faced the most challenging times 
as it did during this pandemic period, and immediately found itself in the forefront, having to mediate the influx of employment grievances cases as a result of loss of jobs, Mr. Speaker said. As the first port of call, Mr. Speaker said, for seeking redress to employment grievances and employment dispute, the mediation services will continue its mandated responsibility. Mr. Speaker said, through our mediation services, we will continue to support the building of productivity employment relationship based on the values of good faith between workers and employers, especially during these challenging times. Mr. Speaker said, the Fijian government has rolled out a number of initiatives. And last month, Mr. Speaker said, new job support scheme was launched, namely Stronger Together Job Support Scheme. Mr. Speaker said, under this scheme, the government will pay the minimum wage of $2.68, while the employer will be paying the difference to make up the sectoral minimum wage. I'm happy to inform Mr. Speaker, sir, that already 600 jobs have already been created. Mr. Speaker, sir, His Excellency the President, in his address, points out to the need for young Fijians with new ideas to come to the fore and for their ideas and innovations to be empowered by all stakeholders. The Ministry of Youth and Sports has included in its mandate through its action plan and the newly developed national youth policy with the assistance of UNICEF, a set of sustainable and green and blue economy focused set of initiatives, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, Youth training, many based within their communities, have been greatly expanded with a focus on new ideas and innovation that promotes local area solution to youth issues. This includes economic empowerment through agriculture-based initiatives, to civics and ethics, and trainings on sexual reproductive health and human rights. Mr. Speaker said, the aim of these trainings are to empower and capacity build youths to become responsible leaders and members of their communities. These trainings also provide relevant knowledge and upskilling of youths for income generation and improvement of livelihoods. Mr. Speaker says, since August 2020, 1,080 youths have benefited from our trainings across the country. Mr. Speaker says, a new initiative under the youth farm level empowers youths to training and providing seeding assistance to sustainable programs. The program assists youth in the utilization of land agreed by the land owning units for agriculture farming purposes. Given that this is an agro-based initiative, Mr. Speaker said, around 322 acres of unused land is provided to the respective youth clubs. It was launched in August 2020, Mr. Speaker said, as a response to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on unemployment and the need to increase food security. Mr. Speaker said, so far we have assisted, assisted 71 youth clubs with 1,893 youths to benefit across the country. We anticipate an increase in the youth participation, Mr. Speaker said, given the impact of these programs on the ground, and we hope that we will be able to provide them with a ray of hope through these programs. Mr. Speaker said, the Ministry has continued to promote sports and wellness programs under the COVID safe protocols. And I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker said, to report that Fiji, unlike many countries globally, has managed to sustain its community, local and national sports competition. I congratulate all the sporting bodies at all levels, especially at the national level, for continuing and ensuring that the show must go on, despite the difficulties imposed by COVID-19. This has not been easy, Mr. Speaker said, and I also warmly thank and document my appreciation to all the stakeholders, and in particular, the sponsors and officials to work together to keep our tradition as a small but great sporting nation. My ministry, Mr. Speaker, say, under the sports de department, 
recognize the continued value of professional sports and remittance from it. This has continued despite the impact of COVID-19 and we will continue to work closely and national organizations to promote professional sports as a viable employment route for our youth. In this regard, Mr. Speaker said, the Ministry will work towards more girls and women being offered pathways in this area to address the gender imbalance. Mr. Speaker said, His Excellency the President, in his opening statement, indicated that we are opening this session of Parliament during a global crisis COVID-19. Since then, Mr. Speaker said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, with some government approving the first line COVID-19 vaccine. Mr. Speaker said, the Fiji First government is taking the necessary reforms to ensure we cushion and minimize the negative impact of this pandemic to our people. As it has from day one, Mr. Speaker said, and as it will continue to do so until this pandemic is firmly under control. We must continue to remain vigilant, and His Excellency the President stated in his address, we must also plan for our recovery and bounce back into a new normal. Mr. Speaker said, I thank you and I look forward to the upcoming 2020-2021 parliamentary sessions as we continue to put Fiji first in saving all Fijians. Minaka and thank you.